If there's one thing that is absolutely inevitable in Sea of Thieves, it's coming across other players. Some of them will be friendly, others will try to sink you but be cool about it, and others again immediately vomit toxicity in your general direction as soon as things don't go their way. Telling somebody to off themselves because they decided to steal some of your pixels in a video game is, dare I say, a bit of an overreaction. And if you know me, you know that I take great pleasure in teaching players like that a lesson. But I am getting ahead of myself. Our voyage did not actually start with any PvP in mind at all, it started with a about 28 chickens. Wait, no, we gotta go back even further. Okay, so this was one of these days where I had a fantastic idea for a video. Not all ideas ultimately come to fruition, but trust me when I say that both of my friends were just as surprised as the lot of you. The side quest sounds horrible. <laughs> oh my god. Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> There's no shot, he just... Okay. Yeah, so the prospect of hunting down 100 animals was not very fun on the surface, and that's because it's actually also not very fun in practice. There is a way for you to continuously spawn in animal crates simply by purchasing delivery voyages, claiming the cargo, and then re-logging to reset the quests. While that was a bit monotonous, it was not actually the most time-consuming part of this project, and we were about to learn that in a hurry. This was most assuredly one of these things in the game, were I to do it alone, I would definitely be watching a movie on my second monitor, and chances are that I would do that with the help of us sponsor for today, Surfshark VPN. How does a virtual private network relate to watching movies? One word, region locking. Every region has their own catalog of content for websites like Netflix and Crunchyroll, meaning we only ever get to see a fraction of what they have available depending on where we live. That also means we're ultimately never getting our full money's worth. Living in Germany, I could not watch half the anime that I indulge in on a regular basis wasn't it for Surfshark VPN. With their intuitive software, I can easily fool all these streaming platforms into believing that I am from somewhere else, and thus proceed to unlock all the content they have available. And so do you! You can save 83% on your Surfshark subscription and get 3 extra months for free, simply by clicking the sponsored link in the description below and using my promo code, the Story Guy. Definitely beats getting shocked in the game, so what are you waiting for? Unlock a more open internet for yourself today! Thanks a bunch to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video, and now, on to our standard programming. Collecting animals in Sea of Thieves is about as uneventful as it sounds. With the crates having been taken care of, all we had to do was go from island to island in order to begin collecting them. Despite no less than two Reaper emissaries on the server who were ready to rumble, nobody wanted to lay a finger on our cargo, knowing it was more work to keep the animals happy than was realistically worth it. Because you see, snakes will absolutely spit venom in your face if you don't play music, and pigs effectively vanish if they go more than three minutes without being fed. That made chickens the indisputable winner of the Animal Kingdom for only being a Bit noisy whenever you do as much as breathe in the general direction. With no PvP coming our way, and the only threat to our project being our ability to stay awake, a lot of us began trying to find a way to stay entertained. Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. What? <laughs> oh my god, he's doing it! <laughs> you can actually bury- No. I yep. think that's the what? end of the video, Cliff. What that's happens not... if you pick them up? It's actually still oh. alive! <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> yeah, it didn't take a lot to entertain us in light of our activity at hand. After a couple hours, we had collected about 28 chickens, 11 snakes, and 4 pigs that didn't starve. We decided that these creatures had stolen enough of our time and set them ablaze in a glorious storm of flames before going off to do something else. This must have been some sort of speedrun in the realm of fried chicken. Anyway, we decided to raise the Reaper Emissary flag ourselves to see what kinds of PvP shenanigans we could get into. We swiftly established that most ships on our server were new players that weren't really worth attacking because they wouldn't have any loot for us to steal anyway. So our plan was to level up our flag to rank 5 with PvE, at which point we can spot other emissaries on the map, to then portal hop onto a new server that actually had emissaries. We also delivered our snakes to Reaper Sider along with the rest of our PvE acquired loot because honestly, they just deserve better. One of the ways to portal hop in Sea of Thieves is by going to any outpost and starting the first Pirate's Life Tall Tale. Once this NPC is done spouting exposition, a portal will open for you to start the Tall Tale, which takes place in a space different from a pub public server. So when you cancel the voyage while inside that different space, the Tall Tale is going to spit you out onto a different server than you started. So far, so simple. But of course, it was when we decided to do that that we got ran up on by a dark adventurer sailed brigantine. These sails are also known as the Tryhard Sails, because they're the only sail in the game that has a cutout, which actually grants a tangible advantage when it comes to captaining visibility. That in itself is not ever going to be the difference between winning or losing a fight though, which meant that I was more than ready to engage in combat anyway. But when I tried to board their vessel in order to drop their anchor after having been displaced by a couple blunderbusses, I heard the one thing no content creator ever wants to hear in Sea of Thieves. Wait. 
I had a sneaking suspicion that somebody might have noticed who I am. The integrity of this encounter was officially broken, and to be frank, these guys were a lot better at PvP than us. Since neither of us had any loot on our ships, we decided to continue with our plan of server hopping, and where usually hardcore PvP bros would be really upset about somebody bailing out a fight, these lads actually took it really well. It was nice meeting you guys, I'll see you around. Bye bye. See you man. Bye bye. <laughs> Bye bye, guys. <laughs> Make sure to grab a flag. Like and subscribe. Okay. I'm sure somebody out there is going to be upset about us doing that, but whatever the case may be, we arrived on a new server and immediately found something to hyper-focus on. There was a Reaper's chest on the sea, and at the time, we did not know that this piece of treasure was on a galleon. But alas, we headed towards it in fully ignorant bliss. Now, it just so happened that there was a sloop headed in that same direction. I'm sure seeing a Reaper 5 Brigantine roll up behind you is scary to many a pirate, but we actually had no plans of sinking them. Birdie announced as much when I saw a mermaid in the water, signifying that whoever owns that vessel was trying to board us. We got a Long just fine and told him that we had no intention to attack him. However, the same cannot be said for a certain other ship. Uh, so there's a galleon. You guys don't happen to know them? Because they seem to be attacking your ship. In an ironic twist of fate, our new friend over here worried too much about us inadvertently running into the broadside of a ship that actually wanted to sink him. And tell you what, after portal hopping away from that dark adventurer crew, I felt like we had some karma to make up for. As we headed towards that galleon to help out the sloop, we noticed that these guys immediately turned away. Ah, I get it, the type of crew that only wants to fight ships that have no intention to fight back. This was as good an opportunity as any to make up for our cowardice, but unlike these guys, I don't actually enjoy fighting crews that don't want to fight as well. I was willing to overlook their little attack on the sloop seeing as how they did not end up sinking it and offered them a very compelling deal when one of them tried to board our ship. Water. Hey, we just want the reaper chest. Can we have it? Can we have the reaper chest, please? We will discuss terms. Ah, that guy was funny. He demanded to board our ship again to then further negotiate. And I'm absolutely certain he would not use that opportunity to drop our anchor so that his ship can get further away from us. Needless to say that we did not let that happen. And thankfully, our sailing skills were a notch above theirs, allowing our swift brigantine to eventually catch up. And well, let's just say that there's more than one way to get a crew to stop running. Oh, this is perfect, actually. Go. Do you want to discuss terms? <laughs> These are our terms. If they believed they had any sort of leverage to be negotiating terms, then certainly our barrage of cannon fire would prove them wrong. These guys were getting the full force of our stacked up cursed cannonballs. Between venom balls sapping their HP and jig balls forcing them to dance, there were few things they could do but watch their galleon fill up with water. Once Brandon and I got on their ship, any chance of them still saving their vessel absolutely went out the window. I know that losing the loot you worked hard to get is frustrating, but what followed next definitely did not make it any better. All you, Brandon? Nick, you just picked up. Nah, I don't think so. Uh, no, I don't think so either. I don't know, I'm, I'm chilling. Boy, howdy, if only these guys knew that I was intending to return their loot to them. A simple GG would have been enough for me to claim no more than the Reaper's chest, but nobody's spitting that kind of toxicity is deserving of any sort of reward. No doubt they would come back to fight us for it once again, but before that happens, we had some time to piss them off even more. Instead of just selling all that treasure, we figured that redistributing the wealth might be a good idea. When we first arrived on the server, we made friends with an Order of Souls emissary sloop, and I'm certain that they would appreciate all the skulls that we just collected. I'm also sure the Reaper's Bones would appreciate all the other loot that weren't skulls because you can be darn sure that we went to sell that stuff. On top of making sure that our snake was fine because apparently buried treasure follows you when you portal hop. It was only right and just to bring the mermaid gems to a sea post so we can get some hunter's core reputation and in a fantastic bit of karma that toxic galleon had been skelly slooped on their way over to us. Delicious. But because we weren't done clowning on them just yet, Brandon and I made an attempt to spare them a visit on our rowboat. I recorded this session during the the Lost Sands event, so we still had access to the Reaper robots, which come with a keg attached to them. Unfortunately, I was the only one getting clowned on because shots fired out of a cannon rowboat felt nigh impossible to hit, and every time I did fire, it pushed us further and further off course, meaning we couldn't even blow them up with it. Thankfully, there was another such rowboat available at our destination. Uh, get ready to go negotiate. Oh, uh, that's another myself. rowboat. That's what I'm gonna negotiate. Yeah, I'm I want to let them know, but they're not here. Oh, they're getting close. Okay, I told them. <laughs> I did what I had to do. Oh, wait, Cliff? Cliff? I got him. God, you just got him! And that exploding rowboat really just marked the beginning of their end. With how incompetent they were the first time, I was not expecting them to put up much of a fight on the second go round either. And our Order of Souls friends helping us definitely did not make it easier for them. Interesting plays all around. 
Uh, two of them died. Maybe just take the L next time, instead of being toxic. Friends, we got skulls for you. Oh, Thank you very beautiful. much. Thank you very much. Yeah, they didn't hit a single shot on us. <laughs> <laughs> Did they drop any loot or is they have not? Yeah, yeah we, cool. yeah, all the skulls were from them and we're just redistributing the wealth. <laughs> so have fun. Oh, I see. And that marks the end of yet another chapter in my book of tales. If you enjoyed yourself some good old fashioned PvP shenanigans, then what about you check out my last episode in which a brigantine was trying really hard to stop Birdie and I from summoning a kraken. You can find the card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea and until next time, peace.